Hello and welcome to our second preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. We've got plenty to get through and match day commentator Chris Temple will be here to go through it all in the next 20 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at the defeat at the Emirates Stadium earlier in the week. We'll also be assessing our under 18s and their FA Youth Cup run. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Manchester City here at Vitality Stadium. But first, we are going to start back with that game at the Emirates Stadium. Chris, it wasn't our, wasn't our best performance, was it? How brief do you want me to keep this? Um, no, in a word. The thing is, I mean, half-time, 2-1. Uh, yes, hadn't played brilliantly in the first half, but 2-1, you're in the game. Um, and to come straight out after half-time and concede after, what was it, three minutes of the, uh, the second half, maybe even less than that. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever Eddie had said at half-time, and it's not the first time it's happened. That's, that's two or three games, Cardiff, Liverpool, um, where they've come straight out after half-time and just switched off. Um, I said to the manager this morning, you know, as a manager from the sidelines and you prepare the team, what can you do about the, the sort of concentration levels? And is it is it down to simply individuals concentrating? Is it down to player intelligence in terms of how to manage the match? Is it down to the quality of the opposition? And he, he basically he said it's a bit of all of those things um, so it's, it's very hard for him you, when you set the team up um, and you you will have briefed them all week and analyzed it to the nth degree this is what we need to be aware of and you know it almost goes without saying you know make sure you're, you're concentrating from the start and it didn't happen the goals are too easy for Arsenal um, you know credit to Dan Gosling for the Bournemouth goal worked really hard forced a mistake proved that the top teams can be human as well um, Guendouzi caught in possession but all in all it was just it was too comfortable um, once it goes to 3-1 then they're starting to chase the game and of course the gaps open up and they pick off four and five. Fifth goal, I thought possibly Artur Boric maybe could have done a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it's one of those nights where uh, as soon as you can see that third really, that the writing was looking on the wall. And as you say, it's the timing of the goals. It was not only the one just after half time, but also the one in the third minute. Yeah, of course. I mean, if anything was to, to I guess, be a barometer of how the night would go, someone like Nathan Ake, who doesn't make many mistakes, nearly Put, uh, put a back pass on the uh, striker's toe, Aubameyang, after 25 seconds so of the game. So that probably uh, gave us a little yardstick as to what might be to come. But yeah, three minutes, Ozil, you know. Apparently he's not been very good this year, but you wouldn't know that from the other night. Him and Mkhitaryan were were running the show, really. Um, Bournemouth struggled to get to grips with Mkhitaryan, particularly sort of tactically, he seemed to be finding pockets of space. Um, they did look better when they changed and brought Ryan Fraser into a sort of a third central midfielder and, and sort of left Lise Mousse up top on his own. Looked a bit more solid, but then they changed to a three and that didn't quite work. Arsenal countered them. So it was, it was an interesting tactical battle, um, but Eddie was as animated on the touchline in the first half as I've seen him for a long time uh, and was as down after the game as I've seen him for a long time as well. And as you say, at half-time it was 2-1. There was just a glimmer of hope there, wasn't there, when Lise say put that in the back of the net? Yeah, always. You know, one goal difference. We've seen it before. You know, uh, For example, at Man City, we'll come on to that later, but away from home, it was 1-1 at half-time. And you're thinking, OK, well, you're right in the game here. And then they, they score relatively soon after half-time. So, um, yeah, that was the, the third goal was the killer. Um, but Arsenal will do that to quite a few teams this season. And Bournemouth will not be wanting to go back to North London any time soon after a, a scoreline of 1-10 against them this season. And of course, on, on Wednesday night, there was no Dominic Slanky, but good to see David Brooks back on the bench. Good to see him on the bench. Uh, there was, I don't think they were, they were really keen to use him, uh, as we saw. As soon as the game was gone, he, he wasn't coming on. If they'd been, a, you know, been closer and there'd been a, a, po a point up for grabs, we may well have seen him come on for 10 or 15 minutes at the end. Um, Sam Surridge, obviously, the, the one positive of the night um, in terms of uh, getting a Premier League debut, a home grown product he's been here well he was here from the age of eight initially went away and came back at 14 um, and I thought for 10, the 10 minutes he came on he looked not overawed I thought he looked good and uh, not to be too surprising when let's not forget he's played what was it 20 games for Oldham bang the goals in was part of an FA Cup uh, upset at Fulham a Premier League team in which he scored as well so he looked like he he'd, he was full of confidence from that run uh, and it'll be nice I hope he gets on here tomorrow against Man City it'd be nice for him to get on in front of the, the home supporters with Solanke still sidelined he's the, the next cab off the rank um, although there's, there's talk that Callum Wilson possibly could be available so no, that was the positive of the night is, is a homegrown player getting his Premier League debut Absolutely a positive in, in Surridge as well and a positive that you know it's just another game out of the way another tough one and now the run hopefully looks a, a little bit yeah, it's a, it does. I mean, City here, obviously, only Tottenham then left in the last uh, nine games of the big six. So, um, yeah, I, I think going away from home, it's been it's been tough. It's a long a long run of defeats. They've lost at every one this season. Um, but you know, there's there's there are ups, occasionally upsets. We saw Chelsea here. We were standing here saying they need everything to go their way. So they need a few things to bounce their way against City and draw a line under Wednesday pretty quickly. Absolutely. Well, earlier in the week, we also saw our under 18s in FA Youth Cup action against Manchester City. It didn't quite end the way they planned but Alan Connell had plenty to be proud of after the game. Alan, commiserations knocked out of the FA Youth Cup. 
uh, quarterfinals. But how proud are you of the boys to have reached this stage of the competition? Immensely proud. So, uh, told the boys in there, um, played against a, a you know incredibly gifted team uh, in every aspect, physically, te technically, tactically, everything. I, I think everyone that was here tonight saw the quality that Man City have that we we knew they had before. Um, but that was you know that's as good a youth team as I've seen. Uh, but our boys, I thought, were, were, were really good. I thought we took the ball well under pressure. We looked to pass the ball, which obviously we always encourage. Um, I thought we tried to be aggressive and, and press them when we could, but obviously their quality dictated at times that we had to just almost um, keep our shape and try and be disciplined. Uh, but I thought we looked to fret going forward at times, put some nice pass passages to play together. Um, it just wasn't to be in a night, and probably their second and third goals were, were, were killers, really, um, especially the second one. I think one or it was five minutes till half time, and that one set pieces cost us um, going at 2 1. Obviously, we're still in the game. Um, and then obviously, 3 1 was prob probably the end of the game. But um, huge, huge, hugely proud. And as I say, the boys will be better for the experience of not just this game, but the whole Youth Cup run. Well, that was Alan Connell after a 4 1 defeat to Manchester City here on Tuesday night. Chris, you were at the game. What did you make of it? Uh, again, a bit like you know, games in the past against City, they stayed in the game for a long time. You know, for an hour, it was a good game. Um, just two one behind the, the goal just before half time was a, a bit of a killer, unfortunately. Um, but again, there's such a golf in class between the resources. Um, Bournemouth a category three academy, Man City a category one. They play in the Premier League at under 18 level every week, whereas Bournemouth play in the the Merit Youth Alliance League, whatever it's called. Um, so it's a huge golf in the resources. Massive experience for and guys like you know Brandon Camp, for example, Scottish under 19 international, um, Jake Scrimshaw obviously put himself about and, and caught a couple of eyes as well was never going to get a lot of service um, but I mean you saw the quality City had a lot of the ball I uh, mentioned for Callum Ward in goal as well who I thought made a, a number of good saves too um, so yeah a hugely beneficial night Alan Connell was really proud of what they've achieved and it'll only be a, a great part of their education going forward being on the same pitches let's not forget three of their 11 City had, had been in the first team squad this season so and one of them played 180 minutes in the Carabao Cup semi-final so that's what they were up against and that experience, they were very well, well drilled, weren't they? Very much like, like the first team were going to be on Saturday. Yeah, but even though they, uh, you know, the way City celebrated their goals, I think that they certainly didn't expect to come uh, here in a quarter-final match and Bournemouth just to roll over, even though there was a golf. Bournemouth, obviously, they'll be aware, knocked out Villa, also a Category 1 in the, the previous round here. So I think City knew they, you know, they celebrated the goals. Even Eric Garcia, who scored the second, went running away to celebrate. Um, it wasn't sort of, it didn't have a, a sort of a friendly match or a big gun against a little gun sort of feel about it. And a great crowd as well, you know, that came through the gates what was it 1200 nearly um, for an under 18 game that will be uh, that will be great for them to see hopefully one or two stars who a bit like Sam Surridge may eventually one day um, mature to the first team and a really good experience for them as well not just playing at the stadium but playing playing against a team like City they don't get to, to play those teams in the league do yeah, they? Yeah and the technical ability that City had on the ball and you know they'll learn, they've learned so much from uh, from playing that game um, everything about City the, the amount of backroom staff they had you know even those sort of things you know you look how many how many members of staff they had and everything um, but yeah yeah, there's, there could be no downsides really, apart from the scoreline and going out of the competition. That's that's sort of one compartment, but the rest of it, that they're the games that Alan Connor will need them to be playing more often, um, rather than with the greatest of respect to the teams in their league. You know, some of those teams are probably not on the level where Bournemouth want to be going to. They might be on the same level now, but it, to, to progress, they need to play the top teams and realise this is what we need to do to get to the top. And it's people like Sam Sarage and Hamdi Offerball, Carl Taylor, they're the ones they can really look up to, can't they? Yeah, and you know the, the better ones of the uh, of the under 18s, you know, will start to try and be making an impact in the 21s um, going into next year. I think Alan Connell said there was maybe four or five first years in that team as well, um, who are only just beginning in their under 18 careers, really. So again, that's huge for them. Uh, others who won't be here next year. So again, for them, it will be that they'll get some contract news in the next few weeks, I'm sure, about their future. So for them, it's a nice way to go out and getting a big cup tie and, and pitting themselves against Man City, which will, even if it's not here, serve them well in their careers somewhere else. And for them, it's obviously nice that, that players like Nathan Ake were here to watch, management were here to watch. For them, that's a real boost as well, isn't it? Someone yeah, to impress. Yeah, they'll have known that as well. They'll have known that Eddie Howe would be would be knocking around. And if you're a centre-half, you know, and you've got Nathan Ake here watching, you're thinking, well, I want I want him to be aware of me and to know my name. And if he bumps into me in the corridor, I want to, you know, I want him to know that I'm in his position. And they'll watch Nathan Ake every week and try and learn from him. Um, let's not forget Nathan Ake wasn't too much long, too far ago and under 18 himself, just five or six years ago. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it's great boost when you have you know, the first team players taking time out of their, you know, their their daily schedules or their week if you like to to come and show their support to I guess you know they say together anything is possible so it, it, a togetherness feel if you like the first team down to the 18s absolutely well next up for the first team is also a visit of Manchester City as Pep Guardiola's side come here tomorrow let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say ahead of the game 
I think Dominic's closer than Junior, so uh, we'd hope to have him back sooner rather than later, but uh, no, both unavailable for this game. Uh, Wilson's getting closer, um, so we'll make a late a late call on him. Um, Injury-wise, he's fine. Again, it's just building up his, his fitness. Um, the goals against Colum has been a problem for us probably since um, since December. We've been frustrated because some games we've we've looked really good defensively. You know, there's been a few clean sheets in there where you, you think we've been very strong. So it, we can do it. We have the capability if if we play to our very very best of beating anybody here. Um, our home form has been very very strong. So do we have the capability? Yes. Um, the game against them this season, I thought we performed well. It's probably with the home game here the tightest we've we've been to them, the closest we've been to, to getting a result. So we've had moments. And we've also had some tough experiences where they've shown their quality. So we hope and pray that we get our A game together and the crowd really get with us and we can produce a memorable performance. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking to the media ahead of tomorrow's game against Manchester City. Chris, there's no two ways about it. It's going to be a, a really tough one, isn't it? It will. I'm trying to look at City's win over West Ham in midweek as a positive, that they might not be firing on all cylinders, um, only winning 1-0, um, but they still won, obviously, to keep the pressure on, on Liverpool. They changed quite a few players for that game. Um, they've obviously got big Champions League matches and things on the horizon as well. So, uh, yeah, at home against City, I mean, let's let's face it, last season they needed a 90 sixth minute winner from Raheem Sterling whatever it was to, to win that game Bournemouth played pretty well and obviously the Charlie Daniels worldie um, then we think back to um, the game at City earlier in the season when actually 3-1 it finished in City's favour but 1-1 at half time as we said Callum Wilson equalising and again Bournemouth were in that game for, for an hour and the second goal um, you know just sort of broke the, the camel's back if you like um, so yeah Bournemouth have been competitive against City but the stat remains they've never got a point off them uh, the only team in the Premier League they haven't got a point off since they, uh, since they arrived um, you you've got to look at the bench that City had the other night you know Sterling was on the bench for example amongst others Mendy Kyle Walker were all rotated out um, so when you've got some of the ability they've got to bring in we've said this every, you know I feel like we've repeated ourselves so many times over the last few weeks talking about the big six but City are the one team that Bournemouth have never got to grips with um, in terms of getting a point so they've got it all on again but on home soil with a high proportion of the uh, the points won here this season and also a fast start, hopefully. Um, hopefully a nice day. Maybe the boost of David Brooks possibly starting. Callum Wilson could be back in the squad. Uh, hopefully one or two positives in the right direction. Let's not forget, it's not that long ago since they beat Chelsea 4-0 here. So it, it feels like a long time ago now, but that should be remembered. And as you say, that, that Chelsea game, as well as the game against City here last year, there are bits of confidence that they can take, aren't there? Oh, of course. And the, City, the Chelsea game, you know, Bournemouth hardly touched the ball in the first half hour, really. Chelsea had all of the ball, um, had, you know, without really having that many clear-cut chances. Bournemouth defended really, really well stayed in the game and then obviously took advantage in the second half when Chelsea uh, began to unravel so that's the key tomorrow you know Bournemouth we traditionally see them start fast here against Wolves actually in the last home game it was Wolves that started fast and they had four corners in the first five minutes or something um, or, or long throws and things so from that point of view they've got to you know they've got to get out of the blocks because everybody will be a little bit down after Wednesday a little bit doom and gloomy but you know eighth is still very much within reach um, a lot of the teams to play in the bottom half of the table lots of presentable opportunities to well, more presentable opportunities than uh, than some of the fixtures over the last few weeks. So, but th you know they need to, they need to turn up against City. They they owe the fans at least a bit of you know a bit of spirit and a, to to concentrate and to not make mistakes. You make mistakes against City, you lose. It's simple as that. And of course, with that game just being on Wednesday night, it's a really good opportunity. This game some come so close to Wednesday night that they can right the wrongs and, and put in a good performance. Yeah, they don't have to dwell on the five-one for too long. I mean, physically, the problem is that you know tough game, chasing a lot of ball at Arsenal. Um, you know, mentally sapping as well and not too many options to refresh it and to rotate it um, you think of players that make mistakes at bigger clubs and you make a mistake in the City team you'd probably be out of the team for at least one game maybe a few um, Eddie doesn't have that luxury I'm not saying he would be the manager that would drop someone for making one mistake but he simply doesn't have the resources to be able to keep changing it around um, you know Chris Meppham had a, a, a pretty solid debut here had a tough night the other night lots of the centre halves will have a tough night at Arsenal that's for sure um, so yeah it, there's resources wise Solanke's still out, Steve Cook's still out, Stanislas still out. Um, not many options to change it. Jordan Ibe's getting a little run on the team. Lisa Mousset, you'd imagine, unless Callum Wilson is, you know, makes a miraculous recovery, will we'll probably have to start again. And I say that in the nicest possible way because he's not a regular Premier League starter. Maybe the goal will be good for him the other night. Um, but yeah, just not too, many, not too many ways to freshen it up. So Arsenal away, followed by City at home in the space of, what's that, four days. Um, physically not ideal. And Eddie Howe did say, he did mention David Brooks and of course Callum Wilson, they are getting closer and, and that's a little boost in 
itself, isn't it? That shouldn't be forgotten how much you take out of the team when, you, when you're missing those guys. I mean, Callum Wilson's the top scorer. Um, David Brooks, you know, is catching everybody's eye in the Premier League with his ability to make something happen. And I think we said last week, you know, that you're relying on a 21-year-old first, first-year Premier League player um, to be inspiring your team. Um, I think it would be a huge boost if he is back. Uh, again, if it's one of those where he can play an hour from the start and possibly can't, you know, isn't fit for the whole game, I think in the circumstances, Eddie would probably want to start him um, and if he can get through an hour rather than bring him on for the last 20 because unfortunately against the big guns, the game can be gone by then. And as, as useful as it will be to get minutes in David Brooks' legs, I think, you know, in terms of inspiring the team, that they could do with that. Maybe Callum Wilson could be the one who could get 15 minutes at the end if he's getting back to fitness. I think he was hoping to be back for the Huddersfield game, so it would be a little bit ahead of schedule if he was to feature um, but yeah I just think the lift that those players and the creativity on the pitch as well as the the sort of mental side of having your best players coming back um, that would be hugely significant if they play a part and of course we're back here at, at Vitality Stadium unbeaten in the league here in, in 2019 that'll be a little boost as well for them won't it and again we've seen here before on on the day at home match for anybody um, a huge proportion of the points, 25, I think it is, out of 34 this season have come here, which is worrying for the away form, which thankfully we haven't mentioned the, the run of away defeats so far, but we've got to slip it in somewhere. Um, but here, yeah, again, it's all, it's all down to that ability to be able to, to dictate the game from the start the way you want to. Um, know that you're against the big guns, you'll, you'll come under pressure. That's where the crowd come in. Um, they've been really good here the last few games, I think, sticking with them. They were great at um, the Emirates. I know you were in the away at the Emirates the other day, and the, you could hear the crowd singing even towards the end of the game, um, enjoying their day out. And, and supporting the team and sticking with them when they know they're going to have tough days against the big clubs. That is going to happen. Um, such are the resource, the golfing resources. So I think the crowd atmosphere will play will play a big part tomorrow as well. Well, it's certainly going to be a very exciting game to look forward to. If you are coming to here to Vitality Stadium tomorrow, then we hope you enjoy your visit with us. But if not, make sure you keep an eye on our website for all the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.